G'day and welcome to another Jarvis Walker Brands Fishing Tip. Today we're going to have a look at the nets that are available to go both sand and mud crabbing and a few tips along the way. So this is how our crab pot sits on the bottom. We've got our bait in the middle so the crabs have to work their way around, get into the opening and get into the bait. One of the most popular is this mid-sized one. The struts just clip into position, works really good on mud crabs. Four supports and four entries. Check your state regulations. In Queensland we can have four entries, but I know in other states you can only have two. At the top here we've got access to put our bait in and out and to get the crabs out. Attach that onto the side. Now I hear a few of you guys from North Queensland say, well that's not big enough for our mud crabs. Well, we've got the answer for you with this Jumbo Pro, a much bigger net. We've got the heavy duty ring and you'll see this chafing rope around here. That just stops the net rubbing and wearing through the net over a period of time. You think, why do you want heavier rings? Well, sometimes you get big tides, strong tidal flow in rivers and even out in the more open waters. So the heavier pot stays nice and secure, doesn't tumble. So we've got our big 300 mil entries in here so the crabs can get in and out, big crabs. And you'll find once the crabs get in there, they tend to tuck in around these corners. So minimal numbers of crabs actually get back out of the pot. Access in and out to get your crabs. And what we've done on this one at the bottom, so you can put your big baits in, we've got the bait bag. So whether you're changing your bait or just putting your, your baits in for the first time, you can get them in there and put a nice big bait in there and the beauty of that too if you've got fish frames you can stack a whole heap of fish frames the better bait you have the more likely you are to attract the crabs we've got this new introduction the small mini crab pot and the beauty of this one is a lot of the time you might be traveling just in your car or a small boat and let's face it these days that many people go fishing and crabbing out on kayaks and canoes it's nice to have something this size instead of that size now it all folds down nice and easily the other thing you need to grab yourself is rope, float, and some way to attach your baits in the various pots. And this accessory kit has everything that you need in it. So in Queensland, you're only allowed to have four pots per person. So we've got four floats in there, 15 centimeters you need in this state. Some other states it's smaller. We've got 10 meters of four mil rope, four of those. And you're also required to put your name and boat details on the crab pot. So there's four tags and a waterproof pen even some little cable ties to attach that to. There's a couple of different ways to secure your bait and it depends what sort of crabs you're chasing or how long your pots are in there. So you can just get your bait clip. In this case we're using mullet. I like to scale my mullet and put a few cuts in it. That just lets more oil and scent out to attract the crabs. And then I can just stick that through and we clip that in the bottom of our net. Now the only drawback with that is when the crabs get in there they start ripping it apart fairly quickly. So if you're going to leave your pots in for a while, you can find yourself with no more bait, so your crabs stop catching. The other option are these plastic bait bags. Now I've bought one that I've used for mud crabs before and left in a bit too long, so you can see what happens. But these bags are great if you're checking your pots regularly. You can shove your whiting frames in there, pilchards. You just hold it in position with your bait clip. Now if you are going to leave them in for a while, I suggest you look at these heavier metal ones. I'll scale my mullet, make sure there's plenty of oil, shove that in there like so. We can just clip that in the bottom of our trap. Bait bag in the bottom. You want to put it so it sits in the middle, so the crabs have to come in to get it. And don't forget to do it back up. So this is how your crab pot should finish up. It sits on the bottom like so. So the crabs work their way around till they find an entry and they have to get, come in to get the bait. Don't let it go in upside down or they'll come and sit on the top and chew at your bait. So you see here I've got the rope attached to the top of the pot and I've also got it placed between the two openings. When you pull it up, you don't want it opposite the opening because you stand a chance of the crabs falling out. So it sits on the bottom like so, our float goes up. Make sure you've got more than enough rope that you need for the depth that you're crabbing in because the tide will pull them under when it starts running. I have to put my details on the floats and I like to number them. There's two of us here today so we've got eight pots out. That way the number lets you know which sequence they're in and sometimes when there's strong tide or in choppy conditions where you've got white chop on the top it's difficult to see. So if you've picked up number six and the next one you pick up is number eight, well you know you've missed number seven time to go back and have a closer look. I'm just putting our big heavy pot out here in the open channel where there's more run and we need the heavier one. See I've got a hold of my float there, throw the crab pot in and then the rope. 
uh, feels like a bit more weight here. You can see how I've come in from the down current site. One sand crab or blue swimmer and one mud crab. So you can see this is a male crab. He's got the pointy piece under his carapace or shell. The female has a rounded section. Now it's always good to have one of these measures. This one's got both. This one's sand crab and the other side's 15 centimetre for the mud crab. So the sand crab goes from notch to notch. So you can see that's about a centimetre and a half under. So that one's going back. Way too small to eat. Do be careful of the nippers. The mud crab gets older, you well and truly know it. So I can see he's not going to go 15 centimetres. So I'm not even going to try and grab him. Just keep that open, turn the net upside down and out he goes. If they do hang on, just give it a bit of a shake like that. Our bait's still fine. So we'll just move a little bit before we put this crab pot back in because we don't want those same crabs to get back in. So if you want more information on the range of nets from the net factory, check out jarviswalker.com.au